Hi everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel here at SMNP Reviews. My name is Caroline and I'm a family nurse practitioner. I'm really excited to share today's video on the diagnosis and management of depression in primary care. I know that psychiatric conditions can feel a little bit daunting to manage, so today let's review some basic ways to assess and manage depression. If you want a deeper dive into other mental health conditions, definitely check out our review courses. And if you enjoy these videos, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and get started. Major Depressive Disorder, or MDD, is estimated by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, to affect nearly one out of every five adults in the U.S. So this means we should be screening for depression in our adult patients routinely. Do you all know a quick screening tool that can be used to assess a patient for depression? You got it, the two-item patient health questionnaire, or the PHQ-2. The PHQ-2 is a two-question screening tool to assess symptoms of depression. The patient will score how often in the last two weeks they felt little interest or pleasure in doing things and how often they felt down, depressed, or hopeless. A positive screen with a score of three or greater warrants further assessment, like the PHQ-9 or the nine-item patient health questionnaire. A completed PHQ-9 is a great way to take a more in-depth history. Other key history components include prior depressive episodes, family history, medical history, even substance use. The historical context will help us rule out any other potential differentials and help direct our treatment. So what are some of those differentials? Well, depression can occur alone or in combination with other medical or psychiatric disorders. Some medical disorders mimic depression like hypothyroidism or even Parkinson disease, so it's important to make sure we're looking comprehensively at the patient. Anxiety often co-occurs with depression, and so it's really important to always ask about symptoms of anxiety as this could change the treatment plan. Also, assess for any symptoms of hypomania or mania that would suggest bipolar disorder, such as elevated mood, decreased need for sleep, impulsivity, and increased activity. Now, what are common symptoms of MDD? Well, those would be feelings of persistent sadness, hopelessness, and loss of interest or pleasure in activities. Additional symptoms include changes in appetite, insomnia or hypersomnia, fatigue, feelings of worthlessness, trouble concentrating, even suicidal ideation. To confirm a diagnosis of MDD, we use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual or the DSM-5. The DSM-5 states depressive symptoms must persist for at least two weeks and have an impact on day-to-day -day function. And once the diagnosis of depression is made, you'll want to discuss treatment options. So what does this entail? Well, generally speaking, treatment should include psychotherapy and medication. For mild or moderate cases of depression, psychotherapy alone can be a good treatment option. For more severe cases of depression, medication is often necessary. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs are typically our go-to medications. Combined psychotherapy and medications have been shown to be the most effective treatment for severe depression. And if you are interested in learning more about depression or other mental health conditions, check out our review courses. And if you are interested in joining an awesome community of NP learners also prepping for their board exams, go ahead and join our Facebook group. The link is in the description. Here is a list of our references. And thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our latest videos. Y'all have totally got this. Until next time.